hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and to another video i feel like it's been a long time since i've done like a fashion video for youtube i'm excited to get into it so it's now the 2nd of september i'm not sure when this video is going to go out hopefully pretty soon but i want to talk to you about the trends i've been wanting to do this video for ages i kind of have been on a bit of a shopping ban not wanting to spend any money because we're kind of in that situation where the summer was just about tapering off but i wasn't willing to commit to spending any money for the autumn winter just in case summer decided to linger around for a bit longer but the temperatures have dropped it's feeling cool in the mornings and i'm just excited because the shops are now fully invested into their autumn winter collections and so i thought now is the time to talk about what trends are out there what's happening on the high street what i'm liking trend wise what i'll be avoiding trend wise and just basically this is going to be a massive trend breakdown i'm going to show you some pieces that are in the shop some pieces that are in my wardrobe of course you don't always have to shop everything brand new for the trends but you'll find that there's a lot of things that you might already have in your wardrobe that's what i've found i'm always so excited when there's things that are in my wardrobe that just happen to be on trend so i have got a notepad here these are all my trends allegra has scribbled all over them first thing i'm going to talk about is color i feel like this is nothing groundbreaking it's like mustard and browns and you know the general autumnal colors are starting to come back out but very key prominent colors are burgundy olive green i've also heard about a pistachio green and i'm going to show you pistachio green dress that i bought as well and so pistachio green is more like a creamy paler kind of green just like pistachio ice cream basically that kind of color and then orange is a massive color like burnt oranges we've got that 70s kind of palette coming in but i feel like i'm doing the weather <laughs> um, so yeah a lot of burnt orange and kind of jewel tones are really big for autumn winter tan as well burgundy no not sorry not burgundy mahogany or brandy brown they are saying is big and is anything in the kind of the brown family you'll have something in your wardrobe that will be like brown mustard orange something along those lines so and you know what these things come out every summer so uh, every winter so that's not really that groundbreaking but of course it's about how we're wearing it so like i said 70s is massive so like this is kind of a 70s inspired print blouse obviously it's actually 60s it might be 60s but it obviously incorporates all the kind of the colors it's got the mustard yellow it's got some beige in there i've got it on right now this tan belt and as you can and blue jeans actually and as you can see they all kind of complement each other work really well brown and blue just work well together the print is obviously very kind of retro and very in keeping with the kind of 60s 70s and even 80s that we are seeing on the catwalk at the moment i spoke to you about browns and tans i actually don't own a pair of brown shoes or boots but what i do have is more of a tan color these are some old tan boots these are from zara they're long which works really well for styling up with kind of shorter smock dresses tunic dresses those infamous kind of floaty tunic dresses from h&m so yeah so this is kind of like the color palettes that we're looking at burgundy again i will show you chloe platforms which you would have seen me wear in so many style videos these are my favorite well, I'm going to say they're my favourite shoes. I say that about all of my shoes. But obviously, I love all of my designer shoes. As you can see, how well does it go with this colour palette here that I've got going on already and goes well with the tan and the blue. Obviously, this blue is a very good, like, vintage blue. And it really works well with brown, actually. It really looks good with this, these jeans and with this top. But as you can see, this all ties in very nicely. So that's burgundy and also platform. So still very 70s. So ticking like two of the trends with these shoes. Another trend is full length coats, masculine coats, long coats. I have got a coat here actually, which I'm gonna show you, which is very similar to a lot of coats I've seen out on the high street already, which I will link below. This coat is actually from Zara two years ago. It's that wine, deep wine red burgundy color i mean it just all ties in so well i'm loving this palette i love that it's kind of rich but neutral as well these are really easy colors to wear and to wear with everything and without having to be too precious about color this will also look good with like pale blue which is another big color for the autumn winter and obviously looks really good with browns and as you can see just fits in nicely with this palette and um, i think i saw a coat, a coat like this in h&m actually which i will link below with the tan it kind of works so these colors are really good to just kind of pair with each other and play around with color without it being too bright and too bold i mean orange is quite a bright color but i think it would still even look amazing worn against the burgundy of this jacket i think it's a really good palette for people that are wanting to experiment with color but are generally 
people that wear black because these colors, although they are colors, they are still deep in tone and they're still really easy to, you know, one thing that everybody loves about black is that it goes with everything. And I feel like these colors are all really good to kind of mix and match and pair together. Another few colors that I haven't mentioned are red and blue. So shades of red are really big for autumn, winter. I have these very bright and very bold red wedges from Yumiu. These are, if you're someone who likes to dress quite simply, doesn't really like to experiment with color much, investing in kind of like accessories to kind of bring in the trend into your wardrobe is a really good way to do it because you know, you can put these on with all black, you can put these on with like a white shirt and blue jeans and you're still nodding to the trend without kind of changing up your style too much. And of course you don't have to buy a pair of Mew Mew shoes. You could buy like a pair of Zara shoes. I've got these shoes also, these are from Zara. These were like 50 pounds, so like a third of the price of what you pay for a pair of Mew Mew shoes. These are current, although I bought them at the beginning of spring. And again, they are still something that can work really well with a classic wardrobe, but will just help you nod towards the color of the season or one of the colors of the season. Shades of red are a good kind of way to nod to the trends as well at the moment. Light blue is a really big color. I have this blazer, which I paid literally like nothing for. I think this was like 25 pounds or was it 35 pounds? And this is from H&M. It was quite a big blazer when it came out as in everybody wanted this blazer. It's still in quite good nick. I mean, I've worn it quite a lot, but it still looks really good. And you know, just wearing this, maybe investing in a pair of blue trousers as well. So it's like shades of pale blue. But again, this kind of would work with a good 70s palette as well, because obviously this really works well with like maroon, burgundy, brown, obviously tan. So yeah, I think this is a really, really good buy. If you have this in your wardrobe, which I'm sure a lot of you will, then this is a good piece to pull out and to start wearing for autumn winter as well. So shades of pale blue and worn all together like monochromatic blue top underneath and blue trousers and even a blue shoe. Topshop have some really good pale blue shoes. So I will link those down below as well. But yeah, so bring this blazer out and start thinking of new ways to style it. Another trend that is big on the high street right now is fringing. I think fringing came was kind of big towards the end of autumn winter because I bought a fringed jacket, but there are fringed jackets everywhere from H&M to Topshop, Zara, you can go much more high end, Ganny, lots of fringing. Is there even, I think even Stella McCartney might have a really good fringe jacket. I will put pictures of all the fringe jackets that I have found up here on the screen somewhere. Even see like some fringed shirts, fringed belt. Zara has a really good poplin fringed shirt. If you want to get involved in that poplin trend, I'll show you my fringed jacket. I bought this at the end of like autumn winter last this year, the beginning of this year. So just at the beginning of spring, basically. I bought this to kind of copy a Ganny jacket that I love. I think I paid 50 pounds for this. And you know what? Not only is it on trend because of the fringing, but the style, jackets are also really good. So these shirt, jacket type jackets. So you will see loads of these. Some of them are belted without fringing. Some of them are just like this. Leather fringe jackets. I think this is a really good way to update your leather jacket collection if you don't have one of these already. It's a very different trend to the 70s. It doesn't really work as well in terms of like the color palettes and obviously the fact that, you know, I think when I think of 70s, I think a lot more of suede and corduroy. And then obviously this is very, a lot more Western and edgy, but you know, Western trends are still here. Cowboy boots are still here. And also I'm seeing cowboy boots slightly move into Cuban style boots as well, which I really love and don't have a pair of. Really, really loving the fringing right now. I plan to get a few more fringed items. I haven't decided how yet. Maybe I might get that shirt from Zara. I just love the movement. I will show you this fringe skirt actually that I'm currently selling because it doesn't fit me and it's absolutely killing me because fringe skirt like fringing is so big right now and I used to love this skirt and it's real leather, let me show you. This gorgeous skirt from Zara, it's a size medium, but it's when a size medium was basically like an eight in Zara before they kind of readjusted their sizing. If you want this sh skirt, just DM me or leave a comment down below or email me. I keep forgetting that I'm not on Instagram right now, I'm on YouTube, but loving this, perfect little number. I'm sure that's gonna get snapped up on eBay soon, but if you want it, DM me or WhatsApp me or WhatsApp me, how are you gonna WhatsApp me? <laughs> Contact me ASAP wherever you'll find my details because this skirt, that is gonna be such, and it's real leather people, gonna be a good skirt for the season. So what is my next trend? Checkmates, lots of checks. I've already seen lots of checks in the shops. I personally don't own a checked coat or the only check I own is gingham. I'm not even gonna pull that out of my wardrobe because I wouldn't say that's a particularly trendy piece to show you. I'm seeing lots of window prints on jackets, so big 
black and white or black and beige big window prints on jackets, wool jackets and coats. I've seen like a heritage check. I can't remember what it is, but it's that black, blue, and so that blue, brown and cream type check. I'll put a picture of it up here in Zara in a puffer jacket style, which is quite cool, different. I think very wearable. Lots of different checks I've seen. Tartan check, which is obviously kind of taken from, I think it's come, it's obviously been inspired by Ganny. You would have seen a dog tooth print dress and lots of variations of items in this dog tooth print at H&M, which is I think in collaboration with the Richard Allen collection that has recently been launched. I don't know if I like dog tooth check. I think for me, it's maybe just a little bit too formal. Maybe something I would have gone for when I was still working in the office, but now I'm not, my style has, cashed down a lot so i'm really i don't buy obviously i invest in the trends that kind of work for me but if you're into the heritage checks heritage heritage checks then there are lots of options out there again they always come back every kind of year don't they? i think obviously the dog tooth check at h&m is a pretty statement piece i think i've seen like some woolen blazers with, like gold buttons balmain balmain style corduroy again obviously that kind of keeps in theme with 70s I don't own any corduroy, but I've seen some really good jackets. There's some really good cream corduroy blazers in H&M actually. And H&M have really just done the 60s and 70s trends so well. Lots of mini skirts, A-line leather with big pockets, very 60s, twiggy style. Sorry, I've just gone off on a tangent here. Right, I was talking to you about, um, what was I talking to you about? Uh, I was talking to you about checks. Okay, my next trend, sorry, I need to get a structure going on here. I'm sorry about this. So the next trend that I'm going to talk to you about is dark florals. So I kind of spoke about this recently in my a video that I did on IGTV, which might also be on here. But it's just kind of changing up the tones of florals. I feel like I've 155,000 floral dresses for summer. And I just got so bored of them. I was like, I don't want to buy another floral dress again. And then what did I do? I went and bought one from and other stores. Dark florals means like in different tones. So again, with the rich kind of jewel tones, deep reds, deep pink, new play on florals. Even we've seen lots of rose print against black backgrounds. I feel like it's a more sexier kind of floral than it's more of a Dolce Gabbana. Floral. You know, Dolce Cabana just does floral so well. Oh my god, it just makes it so sexy. So like more of a Dolce Cabana Italian Dolce Vita style floral print than you know, kind of the the British countryside floaty and frilly and flirty. So I am going to show you two floral dresses that I have, completely different. I think really in keeping with the trend. First of all, I want to show you this absolutely beautiful gem of a dress from and other stories. Look at the print. Look at the colours. So it's got a bit of the rich green in there deep pinks, almost red. A really, really beautiful dress. If you are a subscriber to my website, you will know that I absolutely love mini dresses. They are kind of the, my go-to item when, you know, for like the dress that really flatters my, my figure. I think it's always gonna be a mini dress. And also with this open V here. So this dress takes so many trends. First of all, obviously it's the print and then it is the puff sleeve. And of course the colors are, you know, just perfect for the season and just such a beautiful dress and I think you could wear this with platforms and even with long boots. I was talking to you about more kind of the rose print. So this is, I mean, this, can you believe it's from Primark? There is one in Zara that is very similar that has recently gone down to, I think it's 19 pounds. This is just like a kind of a smock style dress, which will again look amazing. I think this would even look good with a pair of tan long boots, like the tan long boots I have down there because red and tan work so good together and so does tan and black. So I think this could be a good way if you didn't want to go for the obvious black shoe and you want to give it a little bit more of a retro edge because I think tan just helps to make things feel a little bit more retro. Then maybe pairing these instead of with a black pair of boots with tan. I just am concerned, this thing looks massive. It says it's a size 14, but it looks so big, so it must come up quite roomy. I haven't tried this on yet, but I'll be trying this on in a Primark haul that I've done. Red rose prints against black is a really, really typical trend that you're gonna see everywhere on the high street. And I've already seen, like Zara has done loads of versions of this. Next trend is leather. When I'm talking about leather, I'm talking about leather in interesting ways. So obviously every year everyone brings out their leather trousers, their leather skirt, their leather jacket. But I'm talking about leather in like really interesting kind of formations. So like in like a leather shirt, dresses, leather crop tops I've seen, lots of different ways to wear leather. I feel like people have like separate little pieces of leather in their wardrobes, but never, never really they invest in something like a shirt or a dress, something that's just new ways to wear leather that you can kind of incorporate into your wardrobe and wear as if you might wear jeans and a t-shirt you can wear 
jeans and a leather shirt or jeans and a leather crop top or so just making leather more wearable and more accessible in your wardrobe i don't know how comfortable i feel about wearing like a leather blouse i feel like i would get very hot in it so i haven't invested in a leather blouse i have I, I generally just tend to stick with the bottom area when it comes to leather so skirts trousers and if i ever go up here it's going to be a jacket but i think that i'm you know i would like to try one but i just feel like they can make you very very hot i will show you a few leather pieces that are new in my wardrobe i obviously have the basic leather biker jacket and i've just shown you the leather fringe jacket that i have which actually isn't real leather that's faux leather and that's the only faux leather jacket that i've ever bought i do have some a few pairs of leather trousers that i've bought and so i will show you those these i am most excited by because they are a leather trouser but they have a they're like a cropped kick flare if you love, like me, I love the Topshop Dree jeans. They are my go-to jeans for whenever I'm going out. Then these are amazing. So they're not your average leather legging or your like drain pipe leather trouser or skinny skinny trouser. These have got just a little bit more of a different shape, slightly flared, and I think they work really well for the 70s trend. So that's just a different take on a leather trouser. So it's not as experimental as a shirt or floaty skirt or, or you know, like full length leather dress but it is still just a different take on leather trousers and then i have some more basic leather trousers which i'll just show you these are just some like leather joggers slash tapered trousers i had a pair of these from h&m in my wardrobe that i had to chuck recently because sometimes leather dries out and it pulls at the stitching i mean obviously it's not real leather so maybe that's why just these i think will look amazing with stilettos these are obviously better if you you know if you plan on wearing them more throughout the day and with trainers and stuff like that whereas the other ones are a little bit more kind of dressier and i think they definitely need a heel with them then of course your average leather look legging that they just come out every year and i just think for me on the nursery run these are a good way to these are a good items to throw on and look sleek and i think they look really good with trainers but these aren't i mean these aren't a massive trend but they are just different ways of wearing leather trousers if you can't see yourself going super experimental with the new leather trends of the season. Other trends that are big for autumn winter, which I think you definitely be able to work in your wardrobe, is all white. So an all white monochromatic look, white blazer, white wide leg trousers, and a jumper in white also. And um, this is kind of a big trend. It's obviously not your most wearable trend, but it's the trend of the season. I think if I was going to do this to make it more wearable for me, I'd probably go for white jeans as opposed to white trousers. And I would go for a white jumper and just keep it super chill. It's hard enough wearing white, let alone wearing white tailoring. All white looks are big and just general all monochromatic looks. So like I was saying before about the blue, white blue in all different shades, worn head to toe, the same with white as well. And just generally these monochromatic looks, whether you do it in white or blue or even like the brandy brown and lots of these kind of monochromatic colors worn head to toe colorful fur i think colorful fur had a moment a while ago i don't have any colorful fur my fur is either brown or black colorful fur is exciting i was gonna go for a colorful fur coat i would absolutely love it to be from shrimps unfortunately that's not happening anytime soon although shrimps when their coats going to sell they do go quite a reasonable price colorful fur is brilliant especially if you are someone who dresses quite classic or you have lots of simple colors then colorful fur is a really good easy way to just add that pop of color and that instant update to your wardrobe you don't have to spend much money and it's just quite an easy way to just i think coats boots and coats boots shoes and just general accessories are really easy ways to adopt a trend without having to put too much effort or thought into it in this country you'll get your wear out of it anyway because obviously we have so much winter weather unfortunately and also because the coats so you're gonna wear it loads and you don't have to spend lots of money because there's gonna be loads of variations on the high street i haven't actually seen any yet but i remember last year h&m had a good like deep green fur coat and you can do them in deep colors so you're not going too bright and too bold if that's not your thing still like i said an easy way to inject some of the trend into your wardrobe is there any other trends that i wanted to talk to you guys about so just some some basic things that i'm seeing everywhere is obviously things like biker boots sturdy heavy chunky boots these are a massive trend right now if you want to go for dr martins which are obviously about 125 quid start at that kind of price or you want to go for the high street i have seen a good pair in h&m that i'm thinking of trying for myself and i actually just bought a decent pair from primark i don't think that i don't think i'm going to be keeping them i actually just really bought them to kind of just show you 
how you can shop the trends in Primark. That's going to be a different video. I'll show you them anyway. These are obviously very similar to some of the boots you would have seen in Zara. And I don't even know who Zara would have copied these boots off of, to be honest with you. So they've got all the studs around the front, zip fastening, lace up at the across the top. They're obviously a chunky boot. These are, I must say, they look quite good. Some of the boots in Primark, some of their chunky boots, they look so plastic, I wouldn't have even touched them to even show you them. But these look good. They feel they feel so comfortable when I put them on. They're so comfortable and they're actually quite light. I haven't tried the Zara ones on, but I think if I'm going to go for the Zara ones and spend 90 quid on a chunky boot, I'm just going to get a pair of Dr. Martens. I had a pair of Dr. Martens, the Pascal 1480 or whatever they're called, and I sold. That really annoyed me because now I really want them. I'm not generally a casual person and I'm realising that about myself a lot now. I am definitely more of a school run or when I'm on mum duty. I still like to be dressed up. I'm not really a casual, I'm not a trainer, chunky boot type person. But I feel like if I was going to go for a pair, they would have to have, they'd either have to be like luxury or they would have to be a Dr. Martin. Or I would go for a cheaper pair but maybe... I don't know about, I don't know, maybe I will keep these, but they feel really good, they feel really comfortable. You know what, if in the next month I find myself reaching for these because I feel like I need them or I want to wear them, then I'm gonna keep them, but I just, right now I'm feeling like I just bought these to show in my video, but I don't know if they're really for me. But anyway, these kind of biker boots, chunky boots, massive trend for autumn, winter. Another trend that I'm seeing everywhere are these pointed toe shoes i can't explain it so it's like the, the sole of the shoe is actually pointed not like a stiletto or a court shoe obviously these, these are very obviously pointed toe but i'm talking about say it could be like a barely there strappy sandal i'm going to put a picture of what i'm talking about here and the toe is pointed i am loving these i think it's a really nice small detail to just update a very classic shoe i mean obviously last you know autumn i mean spring summer we saw the square toe which is obviously very 90s and now we're getting to the pointed toe i love it i actually do have a pair in my wardrobe i don't know if they nod to the trend completely or if they're fully embracing the trend but they do kind of you know say okay i'm understanding that this trend is going on now and i'm i'm here for it i'm living it so i don't know what the hell i'm talking about i was just getting a bit distracted because the sun came in and i was just anyway let me just get the shoes these are some really old zara sandal they are like a caged sandal but look at the toe look at the sole pointed i mean i think i've seen them that are even more pointed than this but if i was going to try and adopt this trend without spending any money i would definitely be pulling these out i don't wear them very often they are quite a dressy shoe but as you can see they're just pointed at the sole glad that i found these in my wardrobe I might be pulling these out a bit more often now i know it's a trend pointed sole shoes are a trend so obviously things like headbands are still here big kind of crown like headbands I have quite a few of those. I'm not really going to show you those. Baroque style belts are here. I am loving them. I obviously love the Balmont. Is it Balmont or Balenciaga? That has a very Baroque style belt. Again, so does Versace. I absolutely love these belts. Very Italian. You know, I'm all about this Italian, you know, very ornate and opulent fashions. I love them. I just think, you know, obviously it's about incorporating into your wardrobe in a way that is wearable. But for example, this is from this one's from Primark. If you didn't want to invest too heavily, then this is four pounds and it's just a little nod to the Baroque style belt buckle. I love it. I think it worked really well just to, you know, it's very Italian, very Donatella Versace black shirt, black trousers and a big gold Baroque buckle. I'm into all of that good Italian stuff. Obviously, I married an Italian. Anyway, so that is my video. I feel like I have covered all the trends. Oh, one trend. Oh, there's two trends I haven't spoken about. Organza. How could I have I not spoken about Organza? It's one of the trends I have invested in heavily. I have so many Organza shirts now. Organza shirts, sheer shirts, sheer blouses. This is a massive trend. I really like the play on the nudity, but not quite nude barely there you know that kind of play on skin and it's very it's a very sensual trend i did a whole video on organza which i will link below i'm not going to talk too much about it and you know you can look at that video and you can see a lot of my organza shirts you will be able to see in that video i have a whole edit on organza blouses on my website so you can check that out as well not just organza but just general like sheer kind of blouses so where you can see your underwear through and it's that glimpse of you know skin i just think it's a really really nice trend very sensuous very nice for autumn winter because you know i think that organza is going to work amazing against leather two very sexy fabrics coming together but it's like the harshness of the leather and the soft 
softness of the organza I think it's a good juxtaposition I love kind of playing off fabrics and kind of femininity and masculinity so I think organza and leather is a really good combination I'll just show you a new blouse that I got um, recently which is also organza this is kind of a different take on it this one's like stripy look look how sheer it is though oh it's just it's so nice nasty girl has got so many good organza blouses for like really really affordable prices but obviously i just i haven't ordered from nasty girl before i should probably do a haul there one day i'm just scared of the quality and the return situation i'm normally very adventurous when i shop i must say but um i love this it's almost like it's just so nice i like the fact that it's striped as well it does keep a little bit more of your modesty than those completely sheer and open like without the completely sheer blouses that you have seen i really, really like this this is from zara this is I literally bought this today actually, I haven't worn it yet. This is another trend which is puff sleeves. This is the only puff sleeves in H&M actually, and not much of it either in Primark, but I've seen loads obviously and other stories, loads on ASOS across lots of different designers, and of course Zara who is killing the puff sleeve trend, and obviously Nasty Gal, but like I said I've never shopped there. Before. Lots of puff sleeves everywhere still, puff sleeve dresses, puff sleeve sweatshirts even i did get a puff sleeve sweatshirt from zara which i will show you if you can get it in ways that are really wearable like sweatshirts t-shirts zara's even got t-shirts with puff sleeves on it t-shirts with organza puff sleeves you know so if you can find ways that work in your wardrobe to wear the puff sleeve trend for me i'm not really going to wear a lot of these sheer blouses on an everyday basis but the sweatshirt i can obviously wear on the nursery run i can also wear it with my pair of leather trousers and there's lots of ways that wear it if you buy it in the right garment or right design then you can like make it more wearable for you because technically or typically a lot of the puff sleeves and the organza that i have seen has been very dressy so if you can get a sweatshirt that's got puff sleeves or organza puff sleeves you're ticking a lot of the trends right there anyway i need some water out of my mouth is getting dry i want to talk more about accessories i didn't mention that obviously cross body bags are a big trend as well but that's fine you get the drift. <laughs> I'm going to have a whole blog post dedicated to this so you can go and watch that and kind of digest it more. You can shop all of these items and anything you would have seen on the screen down below in the description box or also you can still head over to my website as well. That is it for this video. I hope this has been useful. It's been a lot of information. Probably a long video. I'm quite good at long videos but I just really wanted to give you like a good trend breakdown and forecast so you guys can shop informed or maybe you might not even need to shop because you have everything that you need already in your wardrobe. And I've realized that I have, like just doing this video and I've been able to go through my wardrobe and see what I already have and see what I actually don't need to buy. So it's a good exercise, kind of like use these videos to then like browse through your own wardrobe and then see what you need and then just come back to it and see what, where it is, that, what it is that you, where the item is that you need to buy so you can go and shop it. But anyway, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you will subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying the content so far. Please give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Follow me on Instagram, LinkedIn, occasionally on Pinterest. You can subscribe to my blog or you can just keep following me here. I'm obviously trying to grow this channel. I'm very new to YouTube, so, but I actually really enjoy these long chatty videos. I like making them, I like watching them. I hope you've enjoyed it too. Stay tuned for more trend videos. I have got a video coming up on my Zara haul, a Primark haul and a Topshop haul, all to get everybody ready for autumn winter. Yes! I'm so excited by these autumn winter fashions. Anyway guys, have a lovely day. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Ciao, ciao.